So that segments chords theorem uh, basically says that if I have two chords that intersect, it breaks these up into two different pieces, each chord into two different pieces. So I have an X here and a 3 here, and then I have the 4 and the 6. So what the theorem says is that I can take uh, the 3 times the X, and that's going to equal the product of 3 and X is equal to the product of 4 and 6. So that will be 4 times 6. Um, that's 24. And then if I divide by 3, it tells me that x is equal to 8. Okay, So 3 times 8 is 24, 4 times 6 is 24, and they're equal. All right, so the uh, segment of chords theorem says that, um, in this example, that uh, kn times nj would equal mn times ln. Okay. In other words, well, this piece times this piece is equal to this piece times that piece. So let's kind of substitute this stuff in. So I got x times x plus 4 is equal to x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay. So we have to distribute here. So we're going to get x squared plus 4x. Then we have to distribute here, so that would be x squared, 1 times x would just be x, 2 times x would be 2x, and then 2 times 1 would be 2. Now i got to combine like terms, i got x squared plus 4x on this side, this becomes x squared plus 3x plus 2. Um, I can subtract the x squareds on both sides, that goes to 0 and that goes to 0, so here I have 4x is equal to 3x plus 2. If I subtract 3x from both sides, uh, that goes to 0, so that 4 minus 3 would be 1x. So x is equal to 2. Now, it's asking me for ml, or the length of m to l, and the length of j to k. So m to l, I'm going to have to substitute this in. So ml is going to equal 2 plus 2 for this mn part. And then for the ln part, that's going to be 2 plus 1. I need to add both pieces together. So this is 4, this is 3, so 4 plus 3 would be 7. Now for the um, jk side, I'm going to take j to n, which would be 2 plus 4, plus the k to n side, which is just 2. If I substitute... So 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 more makes 8. Okay, so now we have the segments of secants there. And so what that said was that I can take this outside piece, which is RP, and if I multiply it to this entire length of RK, that's going to equal this outside portion, the RS, times the entire length of RT. Okay. So the outside times the entire length is equal to the outside times the entire length of the other secant. So um, let's kind of substitute this in. So I know RP is 9. RQ is going to be 9 plus 11. And then RS is 10. RT, though, is going to be x plus 10. Okay, so um, these two I'm going to add, that's going to be 20. So 9 times 20 is going to be 180. Then if I distribute here, that's going to give me 10x plus 100. I'll bring this down. Um, I'm going to subtract 10, 100 from both sides. So that tells me 10x is 
80. And if I divide by 10 on both sides, that tells me that x is going to be equal to 8. All right, so let's try this again. I'm going to have example 6. This is going to be 7 times y plus 7 is equal to 10 squared. So 7y plus 49 is equal to 100. 7y is equal to 51. And then if we take 51 and we divide by 7, all right, we get y is equal to 51 over 7. That does not simplify, so that would be my answer. In the event that I were to ask you to round, which I didn't, but just in case I did, you would round to, this would be about 7.29. Okay, but I didn't say to round, so I want exact answers, which would be this 51 over 7. All right, so on this one, it wants us to find the radius of the circle. So this right here, is going to be r for the radius and then r right here. So the theorem said that it would be 20 squared is equal to 8 times the entire length of CD. So since I got a radius and a radius, that's 2r, because I have two of these, plus 8. Okay, now um, two, 20 squared is 400. And if I distribute, I get 16r plus 64. So then I have to subtract 64 from both sides. That goes to 0. This is going to be 336 is equal to 16r. And if I divide by 16, it's going to be uh, 21. 